Hello again and welcome. During this video I'd like to talk a little bit about recent changes that National Instruments has made to their licensing agreement for LabVIEW. A few of you may be aware that they've gone from a perpetual license to a subscription based license. These new licenses are only valid for one year after purchase. This means that after your subscription is expired the software will no longer run. Of course, if you follow this channel, you know that I recently released some software for the Lite VNA, which is based on the 64-bit version of LabVIEW 2021. Up till now, I've been using the 32-bit version of LabVIEW 2011. Let me give you a little background about my experience with LabVIEW. I started out my engineering career back in the 1980s. Back then, in order to automate any of our tests, we were using Borland's Basic. A few of you may remember that. At one point I had seen some software that National Instruments put out. It was something I think called Lab Windows. It ran under DOS and it was this GUI interface that we could use to automate our tests. And it looked pretty slick. I remember it costing a fair amount of money and we didn't investigate it any further. Later in my career I went to work for another company and I came across a fixture that was running and I had asked about the language that they were using to write the software. It looked pretty impressive. Turns out it was LabVIEW 3. I tried using LabVIEW 3. I don't remember what all the problems were, but I do remember it didn't have an undo feature. So like if you wired something up or you placed an object, you couldn't just push undo and back it back out. You basically had to redo everything. There was another problem with it in that when you would build an application or make an executable from it, it would wipe out all of your source code. Really. <laughs> so I don't remember if that was in LabVIEW 4 or 3, but eventually 5 came out and most of the problems were cleaned up. By that point I was familiar enough with LabVIEW that I decided to buy my own copy of it for home use. Eventually I upgraded version 6. I really liked using it. Of course for professional use, the companies I work for continue to buy newer versions of the tool. Eventually LabVIEW 9 came out and then I decided to upgrade my home license. You'd think that that would be a very trivial thing to do. I contacted National Instruments and they had no record that I had any of the software that I claimed that I had. I ended up faxing. I don't know if you remember faxes, but I ended up sending them basically paper copies of all my purchases for home use. And essentially, even with the serial number, they said that the software was so old they no longer had records of it. A few weeks went by. I had spent several hours on the phone with them. Couldn't get it resolved. And I eventually told somebody in sales that I had never worked so hard to give a company money to buy one of their products. So they took a hint and they ended up upgrading my license, but they also gave me like a thousand dollar discount. So I was pretty happy about that and I ended up upgrading to 2011 and I've been there ever since. Of course a few years ago National Instruments announced the end of LabVIEW. They were going to replace it with a tool called NXG and fortunately for most of us LabVIEW prevailed. NXG ended up dying. Recently, for my professional use, we had changed over to the 64-bit version of LabVIEW. Now keep in mind, they've had 64-bit versions of LabVIEW out for some time now. The problem is, is it's always been crippled. So you've never been able to do everything that you could with the 32-bit version of LabVIEW. But this recent version of the 64-bit tools did not appear to be crippled in any way. I was able to run all the software that I had created at home as well as the software that I had created at work. Some of the software like my motorcycle simulator uses the device driver wizard to communicate with a custom PCI card. I also have software that communicates with various test equipment that I have here and in some cases the manufacturer offers their own version of Visa and that allows LabVIEW to communicate with their hardware. So with all of my testing, I didn't find any problems. And one of the big advantages I saw with that software is that it allowed me to better utilize the resources on the PC. Not just the memory, but the multi-cores. Of course, if you're a LabVIEW programmer, you know that it supports multi-threading, but the new 64-bit version does a much better job of it. I liked it so much that I decided to finally upgrade my home license. So I ordered all the software online. You can just download it. It took about a week to actually get the license. But after I had it, everything worked. I was able to port over my network analyzer software to it. I didn't have any problems with it whatsoever. But maybe another week went by before a friend of mine had pointed out that National Instruments had changed their licensing agreement. And I thought, surely the license that I've just upgraded doesn't fall under that category. But I checked, and sure enough it did. 
So when I was filling out all the online forms, it said right in there that it was a subscription base, but it never dawned on me that after 30 years they would change the way that they sell the software. So I just assumed that I was getting a perpetual license like I had always gotten. So after I discovered that it was indeed a subscription base, I ended up writing National Instruments and asking for a full refund. Of course, they offer that up to 30 days after purchase. I'd like to read you some of the correspondence that I had with their tech support. So this is from their tech support. I checked your license and can confirm that you're under the subscription software program. This meaning that you will have access to your NI products and the benefits related to the subscription until your contract end date. I'm glad to hear that you've liked the experience over the years when using LabVIEW. As I've stated before, in January 2022, NI moved to the subscription software program. I want to be very clear that they didn't send me any notification that they were going to be making this change. I would have expected them at minimum to send me an email, if not a paper copy, saying that they were going to make this change at the beginning of the year and I had up till that time to make my last purchase of a perpetual license. Had I known that, I would have gone ahead and made that purchase. But again, I didn't know. I guess they were expecting me to, I guess, hang out on their website or something, maybe. Maybe they made a notification about it up there. They go on to say, I apologize if this change is not convenient on your end. So I responded, it's not so much an inconvenience, more at the end of an era. After 30 years of promoting LabVIEW, I now plan to steer people away from it. On a professional basis, our long-term plan is to start migrating away from LabVIEW. Funny as I went back over and looked at the order forms, indeed it does state it's a lease, it just never occurred to me that after all these years that National Instruments would change their licensing to a rental. So they provided me with some additional information about why they've made this change. So they went on to say I'd like to add that this change was made mainly for the benefits that it will bring to the customers. Some of them being lower price barriers to access NI software and gain full access to service entitlements. Of course I responded to that with I assume that these changes were made to try and prop up the revenue of an aging and dwindling user base. In your last email you commented about a single way to buy the NI software that you need. I think that your idea of need and mine differ. Your company may feel customers need you, but you may find that it was the other way around. While I think that the community edition was a good attempt to try and rebuild your base, the change in the licensing should help end it. I went on to say that the low cost is much higher, which is why we will no longer be using it for professional use. Again, I want to be very clear that the license for my home use would have cost typically about $3,000, maybe $3,500. That's basically what I was expecting. I think the bill came in at $3,000, but again, that's for one year of rental. That's not perpetual. It went on to say you have the freedom to use the software on a year at a time with every upcoming update available for the product. I responded with we had the freedom to use the software perpetually, not just for a year. They also wrote, focusing on our software platform enables NI to invest in a scalable, modernized experience. <laughs> I responded with, let me remind you how LabVIEW was soon to be replaced with NXG. That's focus. They also wrote, improved access to new features to meet increasing go-to-market pressures. I responded with, new features? Are we referring to the new company logo? Had you rolled out features that I found useful, I would have upgraded much sooner. I held off because of how stagnant the tools are. They wrote, quick and reliable access to engineering support. So let me tell you a few stories that have accumulated over the years in regards to their tech support. So I've mentioned before that I have these GPIB Ethernet controllers from National Instruments. Now those are no longer supported by LabVIEW, but back when they were being supported, I think it was when I upgraded to LabVIEW 6. Basically what ended up happening is any software that I would run, it would stall out, whether it used the GPIB controller or not. It would cause the software to require tens of seconds to actually come up where it used to basically be instant. So eventually I called tech support because I would like to get this resolved. I literally spent about a week with their tech support, basically with one person, trying to get them to replicate what it was that I was seeing. Eventually what ends up happening is this person takes this Ethernet GPIB controller and they've got it hooked up to their PC and they're basically telling me they can't replicate this problem and I ask them to explain in detail how they have it connected and what software tools they're using. As it turns out what they've done is they've taken the PCI GPIB controller that's in their PC 
and they've connected that to this GPIB Ethernet controller through the GPIB bus. Really, it was at that point that I knew that we as customers are training their tech support people. One time I was working on a project, we used the PCI Express bus, and again I was talking directly to that hardware using LabVIEW, and I think it was when LabVIEW 9 came out, basically I could no longer talk to that PCI Express hardware. I ended up again calling their tech support, and of course their typical response is we can't reproduce the problem. Eventually what I did is I traced it down to a single file and I wrote them and I said, you know, if you just copy this one file out of the older version of LabVIEW, I can actually make this thing communicate. Long and behold, eventually I get this phone call from somebody at National Instruments and they're explaining, hey, we've replicated your problem and they explained in detail what the mistake was when they had coded that section and there was some kind of a index table or something and what had happened is instead of appending it to the end of this index table they wedged it somewhere in the middle and it broke all of the calls that were after that one that they had added which basically broke our PCI interface but I would say it took me several hours to trace that down before I could give them enough data where eventually somebody there could actually solve the problem. I think when LabVIEW 2010 or 2011 came out, they broke the serial ports of all things. So basically, you know, you get all these USB serial port dongles that you can buy for your PC. I had a bunch of those. Now the OS had drivers that supported those, but National Instruments doesn't seem to use those calls. So they have their own way to communicate with that hardware apparently. Anyway, they had rewritten that section of code in C-sharp or something, and it basically broke all of my serial dongles. We went through and we sorted them out, and it turns out that the ones that were made by FTDI didn't have this issue. So I ended up tossing out all of my old hardware and then changing over to FTDI exclusively, and I've never used anything other than that ever since. Probably one of the biggest snafus that I ran into is I was working for a company and they had actually tried to use some of National Instruments hardware not for a prototype or a test fixture but to use it in a product for production. I got involved with this project because it was having some issues and I started looking at this card from National Instruments. This card had several differential inputs and long and behold the card didn't meet the common mode specs that were called out in the documentation. So I wrote this huge document explaining what the problems were with the card and all the tests that I ran. Of course, I talked to their sales department, and I was told that there was no way that they were going to allow me to talk to an engineer at National Instruments. It's just not their company policy. So, again, some time goes by. I was pissed as hell because now we have to design a way out of this problem. And eventually, I don't know, it was probably a month later, Again, I get this phone call from somebody at National Instruments, and I think that they said that they maybe had designed the card or they were involved with it, but essentially they ended up going through all my testing. They were able to replicate exactly what I was seeing, and they wanted to let me know that they had solved the problem, not by actually fixing the hardware, but by changing the specification for the product. Anyway, you can see that there's been some changes at National Instruments, of course. Again, they've changed the company logo and the company name, as a customer, I found that very helpful. Uh, I want to be clear that I did get a full refund for my purchase. But of course now I'm back to using LabVIEW 2011 32-bit. So what's that mean to you? Well, if you're using the software that I wrote for the V2 Plus 4 or the Lite VNA, again, that's using the 64-bit version, I no longer have any way to support that software. It's up there for now if you still want to grab it and use it. But don't expect me to make any changes or corrections to the software. Again, I want to be very clear that there was a reason that I was using National Instruments. If you join me up on the EV blog, you'll see countless experiments that I've ran. I can put some fairly complex code together within minutes, which normally would have taken me days to do. So while I endorse the use of LabVIEW for rapid prototyping, or basically any kind of test and measurement software that you're going to write with a PC, that's no longer the case. Again, it's no longer a cost-viable tool. If you look at the hierarchy of the company, you'll see that there's been some people that have changed positions. And I hate to say it, but I think the new management is part of the problem. And I think that's going to be it for this video. Again, if I do end up releasing new software for these VNAs, it will be based on the old tools again. So if you have the older runtime engine and the Visa installed, you should be good to go. Unfortunately, the 32-bit version, again, just isn't as good as the 64-bit. There's a reason that I upgraded 
think that's going to be all for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Till the next time. Later.